Like most automation tools, Packer provides us the ability to utilize user-defined variables that we can reference throughout our configurations. And there is a whole document on this explaining how uh, user-defined variables work, as well as environment variables. And I definitely recommend you guys take a look at that, but I'll walk you through a quick example on how to use variables in your Packer config. And so once again, I'm going to copy project two because that's a fairly simple project. And I'll rename this project seven. And if you already forgot what project two was, right, we're just creating that Nginx server and running a couple commands. However, what I want to do is I also want to add um, a couple of post processors that we used in project six. Actually, we'll just use one. I'll just use the manifest post processor, but I'll copy all of this. And I'll delete the vagrant processor. All right, so simple config, create Nginx server, uh, and then create this output file. But let's say we want to use a variable to define what the name of the AMI is going to be. So we can do that by typing in uh, variables and then passing in uh, basically a list of uh, the different variables. So let's say uh, we'll create a variable called description. Here we can then just pass in a value. And um, so I'm just gonna call this my uh, web server. All right, and so now to actually use this variable throughout the script, uh, what we can do is uh, we have to, I'm gonna replace my AMI name because I'm gonna use my description as the AMI name. The trick is to use uh, two curly braces, two opening and closing curly braces. And then you type in user. Then you have to do backtick. So this is not a single quote, this is a backtick. And then you type in the name of the variable that you define. So here's gonna be description. And then another backtick to close that out. All right, so this should pass in the name my web server into the AMI name. Uh, now the great part about variables is that we can reuse them as many times as we want throughout the configs. And so in this case, let's rename what the output file is. So instead of output.json, I'm gonna name it whatever description is and then add .json. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna remove that output, do the two curly braces and the two curly uh, closing curly braces, user and then backticks and then description. And so once again, right, this is going to grab the value of this description variable, add it into here, and then we're also going to add the .json. So it's gonna perform a little bit of string concatenation to kind of join that variable as well as the .json into one string. All right, let's run a packer build example.json. And it looks like an error occurred, so let's take a look. And I forgot the I here as well. And we're gonna let that run, and then uh, we'll take a look at what the output file and the AMI looks like once that's complete. Okay, so now that that's complete, if we take a look at our Project 7 folder, you'll see that it created a file called My Web Server JSON. And that output is coming from that post processor that we configured, where it's taking our variable, which is set to my web server.json, and then uh, joining it to .json. And if we go back to our um, AWS console and go to AMIs, uh, it, we should see that it created an AMI with our variable, my web server. So that's the basics of how to use um, variables, user defined variables within a Packer config. So in this example, we hard coded the description variable to a value of my web server. However, there may be times where you want to be able to pass in the variable or the value of the variable through the command line when you run the packer build command. And you can do that. Um, and all you have to do is just, first of all, go ahead and just delete that and just pass in an empty string. And then when we do packer build, you can pass in a var and then you do quotes and then the name of the variable, so description. and then set it equal to whatever value you want. So you'll just, uh, so I'll just call this, you know, my variables. Eh, we'll give it something nice. Uh, so how about uh, Nginx server build, right? And then we just pass an example.json like we normally do. Um, however, keep in mind that on Windows, it's double quotes. Uh, however, if you're on a Mac or Linux, you're gonna wanna use single quotes like this.
Okay, so I'm going to change this back to double quotes because I'm on Windows. And if you want to pass in multiple variables, you know, we can always do, uh, we can add in a second variable and we can say uh, uh, version and then set this equal, uh, set it equal to an empty string. And then let's say we want to uh, add the version after the name. So we can do that as well. We can save this and then now we can also pass in another var and that's going to be version equal to and we'll just say 2.4 and then we can run that and so now it should take these values populate them into the variables and then they can get added um, into you know the ami name as well as the output um, but it looks like i messed something up oh yep i forgot to change into my project seven directory. So now if I run this, uh, everything should run just fine. And then once it creates that image, we should see it say, um, what did I type in again? I already forgot, guys. Uh, it should type, uh, basically the AMI name should be nginx dash server build, and then it should be dash, and then it's going to be the version of 2.4. So let's wait for that to complete. And then let's just verify on the AWS console that that's what the AMI name is. All right, so now that that's complete, let's go back to the AWS console and let's take a look. And now you can see nginx dash server build and then dash 2.4. So it combined both of those variables for our AMI name. Now we only have two different variables in this example, so it's not too bad. However, if you're building more custom configs, more complex configs, you may end up with, you know, 50, maybe, maybe not 50, but you may end up with a lot more variables and it can kind of start to make your main .json file look a little messy. So what you can do instead is we can create a separate file just for the variables, and then we can reference that file so that we don't have to keep the variables within here. And the way to do that is let's go under project seven and let's create a new file and we can call this whatever we want. Uh, so I'm just going to call this a variables.json. And then going back to the example.json, what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to copy these. And so this is just a regular JSON file like the other file, so we need to make sure it's in the same format. And let's just give these arbitrary values. Uh, so this will be custom var file and then version five, doesn't really matter. And then under the example.json, we don't need the variable section anymore. And we can hit save. And so now the way you pass it through the command line is by typing in packer build. Actually, let me do a save all before we proceed. Packer build dash var dash file equals, and then the name of the file. So you got to give it the name as well as the path. So we want um, where to go variables.json and then example.json, which is the main config file. And there you go. So it's going to run. So that's all I wanted to show you guys in this section when it comes to user variables. We'll start to take a look at environment variables in the next video.